Welcome to Still a Part of Us. This, I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. And we are just checking in. We haven't done this for a minute. And so we wanted to really quickly tell you what's happening and also kind of do a a little special brief note on grief that Lee's going to be doing. So anyway, we just celebrated our son's, um, our son that was still born, Brandon's birthday last week. Is that right? It was his sixth birthday. Yeah. And when Winter was was wondering, hey, what should we do for his birthday? I sort of had, I had a little bit of guilt because I was like, I don't, you know, I don't want to go over the top. I don't want to mm-hmm. go really big. It has felt like this year has been very peaceful. And yep. I suggested, let's just celebrate it like a, a birthday. Yeah, just like a normal birthday, because we don't, I mean, it would be his sixth birthday. It's mm. not a, a milestone yeah, birthday. It's not a milestone birthday. <laughs> so, and we don't set, we don't really do like crazy milestone birthdays. We just have a cake and yeah. have presents and stuff. So that's what we did. And we mm. had a really nice time at his graves, yeah. um, gravesite and decorated it with these cute little, all these cute pinwheels. They were hard to get into the ground they at were. first, but... When you figured it out yep. and they spin and they were beautiful yep. and they brought joy. And then we went as a family out for breakfast, which yep. we would, we probably would have done anyways as a birthday. Yeah. We um, watched a movie that day. And then we also did, we have a neighborhood um, little get together during the summertime. And we invited everybody to come and just regular, regular old get together. I mean, it was yep. our s'more night. And we ended up um, having an extra cake just to celebrate his birthday. And that was, I thought that was really cute, actually. We got him a bluey cake because we love bluey in this house. (laughs) Yeah. And it was nice. And and we didn't go over the top. And nobody, I don't think we felt like we were guilting anybody to to celebrate with us. And it was very well incorporated into what a birthday for a six-year-old would have been like. Would be like in our family. And so- I think that was one of the things that I took away this year was that the grief is is not so intense. And in fact, um, when I was talking with my therapist about this a little while ago, she said something that really helped me. She said, you might be in the part of the river because you're going down a river and sometimes you might be underneath a waterfall and it's intense and crazy and you can't get your catch your breath. And other times you'll be just floating down the river. And I think we're in the floating down the river portion where it's, yeah. things are going along and that's where we're at. So one of the things that we wanted to do really quickly today was just to say we're going to take a really quick um, summer break. Uh, so we won't have any episodes in August. Um, and if you find us after August, then great. We're, we're, we'll be back on the first Sunday in September with a new episode and some new things in development that we're working on. And so um, I think those are kind of the main things. Is that right? Yeah. We would like to thank, first of all, all the parents who have been so kind and generous to share with us the life and yeah. legacy of their children. And we would also like to thank all those who have been so gracious to share with us in our grief by listening to our stories. Yeah. So thank you all. It really means so much to us. It feels like a privilege. Um, that we get to be in that very special space um, with you. So thank yeah. you so much for being here with us. Yes. I'm going to turn the time over to Lee so yeah. that he can share his thoughts that he had this year for Brandon's birthday. Yeah. And thanks again. We'll see you guys in September, right? See you in September. As a family, we went camping in the mountains of Utah. Our campsite was next to a little stream that had an open play area where the kids could build rock forts and dig through the mud. Our daughter would come up to me and show me all the cool things she found while exploring. There were rocks, sticks, leaves, bugs, all things a curious mind of a little child would find interesting. A few of these treasures were little pieces of sea glass. The soft glow of these stones caught the eyes of my daughter, and she asked if these were something she could bring home. Even though we were hundreds of miles from the sea, the process of making sea glass is the same in this simple stream as it is in the ocean. Grief is often likened to many things, each striving to encapsulate the complexity and depth. The grief of losing a child is unique and profound experience, 
one that can be compared to the journey of sea glass found on the beach. Both hold a story of transformation shaped by continuous forces, ultimately finding a place in the world where their beauty is recognized. When your baby dies, the initial impact is shattering, much like a piece of glass thrown violently against the rocks. The heart breaks into countless shards. This sudden fragmentation leaves a person feeling raw, jagged, and exposed. The sharp edges of sorrow cut deeply, and the pain seems endless and unimaginable. Just as the glass once had a clear purpose, holding form and function, the dreams and hopes for your baby are abruptly severed, leaving behind only fragments of what might have been. Time, however, begins its inevitable course, much like the ocean's endless waves. Grief, in its initial stages, is relentless, pounding against the soul with a force that feels impossible to withstand. Yet as days turn to weeks and months, the harshest edges begin to soften. The pain remains, but it is transforming. Like sea glass being tumbled through the ocean, each cycle of remembrance and sorrow smooths the jagged edges of the initial heartbreak. The process of sea glass forming is long and arduous. It is tumbled and tossed, buried and uncovered, subject to countless elements that shape it over time. Similarly, the journey through grief is not linear. There are moments of calm where the pain seems distant, only to be followed by days where the waves crash with renewed ferocity. This tumbling process feels unending, but with each pass, something remarkable happens. The raw edges begin to smooth, and the fragments start to form a new kind of wholeness. The raw edges begin to smooth, and the fragments start to form a new kind of wholeness. Eventually, the sea glass washes up on the shore, and what was once a jagged, broken piece of refuse has become something entirely new, transformed by the very forces that once threatened to destroy it. This is the essence of grief's journey. The loss of your baby is a heart-wrenching tragedy, but through the passage of time and the process of mourning, the grief is integrated into a person's being, shaping them in ways that are both painful and unexpectedly beautiful. In the end, both grief and sea glass illustrate the profound ability of time and nature to heal and transform. The journey is neither easy nor swift, but is powerful and deeply meaningful. The memory of your baby, like the sea glass, becomes a testament to the enduring human spirit, finding beauty and purpose in what was once broken. Through grief, a person is forever changed, shaped by their loss into something more profound, with edges smoothed by the never-ending yet gentle forces of time and love. This year was my son Brannon's sixth birthday, and maybe for the first time, it was a very peaceful, calm day for me. It wasn't filled with hectic scheduling, trying to figure out how to get fundraising or doing service projects. It was a day of remembrance and a day of family. Though he is our middle child, he is part of our family, and it was nice to celebrate him. Happy birthday, Brandon. I love you. <laughs>